Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about how our approach should be for work from home internships. In a recent interview, TCS was seen saying that only 25% of its workforce will be working from office by 2025. Rest 75% will be working from home. This is a huge change in the industry and we need to ask ourselves this question. Are we ready for this change? We have with us Mr. Amul Pawar, who is the Associate Vice President of Customer Success at People Strong. I thank him for taking our time from his busy schedule for us. See Amul answer some of the basic questions that are coming in the mind regarding this new style of working. Hey, hi guys. I'm really happy to uh, talk to you in this format uh, based on a request from Shivani. So thank you Shivani for uh, you know asking me to do this. Uh, a few words about me. I'm Amol Pawar and I'm a 2002 SIBM pass out and I'm very happy to uh, you know offer this uh, my my perspectives and some questions around internships. First question that Shivani has posed uh, to me is uh, what should be the general approach uh, to project during the work from home internship? So, uh, first of all, congratulations if you've got an internship during this uh, time and uh, situation and I think that's a, that's a great job uh, that you and your institution has done. From my perspective, uh, I don't think so things would change much uh, in terms of expectations from you and how you would be able to do it. Uh, all of us are getting used to working from home and using uh, technology tools like uh, Microsoft Teams or Zoom or Google or whatever other platform that uh, the particular organization uh, would be using ensure that just like in any other internship you would have uh, you know let's say shown up in their office at whatever uh, predefined time so you are uh, ready uh, dressed in uh, you know office attire and you're available on your uh, machine or your laptop uh, for for those interactions that are that are to happen if if they were uh, to happen on that particular day it's just that you would not be traveling to the uh, to the particular company's office but uh, it will always help if you get ready on time and be available during those uh, office hours where you are supposed to be available the second question there is what should we do uh, how should we communicate with our mentor how often should i uh, message them I don't think so much would change uh, because even when uh, you know you would have been in their particular office, there's no guarantee that the mentor uh, is, is going to be available all the time sitting next to you. Uh, in this particular situation, I think in the first few meetings, it would be absolutely necessary for you to talk to the mentor very, very clearly and uh, define that schedule. Uh, in terms of uh, what, how how would you report? Would there be a morning a meeting where you uh, you know get from the mentor as to what you are supposed to do today, and then again in the evening you report that back to uh, the mentor either over a call or an email or whatever that is, uh, and and have that clearly documented so that both of you are on the same page. Uh, also, maybe discuss about tools. That is it okay if I send you a message on WhatsApp or drop you an email or a chat message on Teams. Get an understanding of what technology tools are in use in the uh, organization. Um, uh, make yourself familiar with it if you are already not familiar with using those tools. Uh, and build those into your uh, conversations, build those into your uh, review mechanisms with the mentor. How to take care of virtual meetings is the next question and I think that's a very interesting one. Uh, you guys uh, are, I think, uh, digital natives. You guys have been using digital technology uh, for, for much longer than uh, probably what we've been using doing, during our growing up years. The only caution that I would have is that this is a professional conversation. This is going to be a professional discussion and uh, hence, uh, you know, focus on how you are dressed. Uh, focus on you know how how you are uh, groomed, uh, and focus on what's behind you. Even for shooting this video, I could have uh, you know really uh, shot this video uh, without having shaved, uh, without having worn this uh, you know uh, shirt, and, and probably having something else at the back uh, as as my background. But uh, I chose to uh, do all those things to ensure that this, this uh, you know, appears and stays as a professional conversation against a very casual chat uh, with, with my friends. If you have homes where you can, uh, you know, be in a separate room like, like I am, 
uh, this is my work room so uh, that's the ideal situation but i understand that many of you may not have that so please identify a corner in your house which you call as your work corner ensure that the uh, the background is is all fine you can also make use of uh, you know uh, virtual backgrounds that are available now in most platforms so the next question that uh, i am i'm asked to look at is how do i do primary research uh, when i'm work from home uh, the good part about this is it's not just you but the person who is supposed to be uh, the subject of the interview is also working from home in this situation. In, in an earlier environment, you would have probably traveled to that particular person's uh, location. Now in this situation, all you will do is to set up a meeting. So just like any other professional conversation, you would get in touch with that person over a phone or an email, ask for that person's time set a meeting invite, send a uh, formal meeting invite, be clear about what tool you are going to use, whether it's going to be a Zoom or a Team or a Google or whatever other uh, available and recommended mechanisms. Uh, take help of your uh, organization where you are doing internship to identify those. If it's, it's going to be a survey where you are, have to send out a survey and people have to fill it in, uh, again, uh, you, know, you, would, you would send it over an email, follow it up with a call, if required, set up a uh, you know a video con call with the with the set of people uh, where you have to explain yourself. So all of that will still happen remotely. The last question on this uh, is is a uh, interesting one or a bit of a tricky one. Will companies be offering PPOs or PPIs, and how do I evaluate or judge my own performance? So I think there are two two questions really there. So I'll I'll go for the second one first. So I think it's it's again uh, you know depending on what your internship assignment is, uh, depending on what are the uh, metrics that the organization or your mentor is using to evaluate performance. Uh, if if those parameters are very very clear to you uh, and have been clarified uh, by you with your mentor then i think it will it will be uh, you know a very very simple task for you to do that uh, let me give you an example so uh, when when i did my internship uh, you know uh, back in 2001 2002 uh, one of the first few questions that i had asked uh, my mentor uh, and and the chr of that organization was that how are you evaluating me during this what what are the uh, parameters that you are uh, you know evaluating me against and, and in that particular assignment, they told me that I will be evaluated based on the time I take to do this and the quality of the output. Uh, I further asked them to break that quality of the output into specific parameters. So in the context of that assignment, uh, they did that for me. And once I had that clear, then I knew what I wanted to do to break those uh, parameters, right? So despite of you doing a great job on your internship, even in an otherwise normal uh, business situation, there is no guarantee that companies will offer you a PPO or a PPI. Uh, however, having said that, it also is a function of what kind of company you are doing your internship in. So there are certain industries, there are certain uh, sectors which are uh, still looking at uh, hiring people. And if, if you've got an internship in these times, I would say that's a great start. Uh, it's, it's also okay if you can ask this question uh, you know, right up front uh, with your mentor in a formal or an informal conversation as to what uh, what's going to be, uh, you know, the company's policy going forward. Uh, is it something that they are looking at hiring a fresh uh, MBA candidate at this stage so that you get an uh, you know, understanding of whether you would be likely to be offered a PPO or a PPI in that organization. So I think that's all from my end. Uh, this is my first such, uh, you know, conversation when I'm uh, talking to people through a video interaction. So I'm really, uh, you know, happy that I, I got to do this. And I hope uh, the answers that I've provided uh, gave you some direction in, in your search or in your uh, dilemmas. If there is anything more that I can answer for you, uh, please look me up on LinkedIn and uh, you know, I'm more than happy to uh, answer any specific questions that uh, any one of you would have. Uh, wish you luck and bye-bye. In a nutshell, ensure that you follow the regular office hours and the dress sense. Take care of what is there in the background of your video screen. Know the tools your company uses for virtual interaction and learn them beforehand. In the first few calls, discuss the timing and mode of reporting with your mentor. Adopt electronic ways of primary research 
and leave the tension for PPO and PPI to your company. The best takeaway for you should be the practical knowledge out of this experience. Amul and I will answer all your questions in the comment section, so feel free to post. So that is it for this video. In case you found something useful to take out of it, then like this video and subscribe to my channel.